All right, we are here in beautiful sunny Florida breaking down UFC Fight Night 95, Cyborg versus Landsberg in Brasilia, Brazil. Um, love this card, love it even more for betting. Um, quickly go for last week's bets. Um, crazy roller coaster night for me, man. Probably the craziest night in my young betting career. Um, originally, try to go over these as quickly as possible. There, there's a lot, but. Um, uh, I originally had seven bets. Um, I had 1.6 units, uh, Brunson straight up minus 160, won that. I had one unit, Brunson Hall under 2.5 plus 140, I won that. Then I had one unit, Morales, Muhammad, obviously that canceled that with the draw. 1.5 units, Dunham, Muhammad, Antonio Carlos Jr. plus 155, won that. And then I had three half unit bets, Morales, Gomez, Brunson, lost that. And then um, Skelly Brown, Antonio Carlos Jr. won that. And then Gomez in the distance w with Brown. Um, so basically what happened here, um, Morales, he, he, that fight was a draw, and um, which it shouldn't have been. I thought Morales clearly won that fight, but whatever. Um, I wanted to go, um, that canceled out the Morales-Gomez-Brunson uh, parlay, and I really... I wanted more on Gomez. I was confident in Gomez, so I made another parlay with Gomez, Muhammad, and Brunson, and Gomez lost, man. I, I was confident in him, but I saw a lot of people on Canones, and I didn't see it, but um, I, I guess, I don't know, man. I, I just thought Gomez was going to win that fight, but uh, either way, I, so I lost that new parlay, and I lost two units on Gomez, so it really wasn't looking good, so I made a half unit plus 600 parlay with Benitez, Brunson, and Wade, and Benitez won, and I was stoked. Thought things were gonna go well here, but uh, you know, Wade lost, so I lost that one too. Then I made another one-unit parlay with Brunson, Dunham, and Kenny Robertson, and Kenny Robertson got robbed, man. I mean, he didn't get robbed. It was a close fight, but I thought he won. So at this point, I was just really frustrated. So I made a uh, three-unit parlay of Brunson and Dunham at minus 101. Thankfully, those guys came through, and the other two Brunson bets came through the uh, straight up and the under, so I made plus uh, 5.1 units. It was a crazy roller coaster night, but it ended on a uh, big winning night. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it could have gone horribly for me. I, I don't think I'm going to do that again, but it, it worked out this time, so I think I'm just going to... Uh, you know, not try to go all crazy like that again, but uh, going on to this card now. Uh, first fight of the night, uh, Glyco Franca, minus 130, taking on Gregor Gillespie, minus 110. So I watched a lot, as much Gillespie fights as I could, and um, you know, I like him. He, he Obviously, he's a really good wrestler. He's got a good ground game, but the thing is, his striking... Um, yeah, every time he gets his takedown stuffed or the uh, other guy gets up, uh, he just... He throws two really sloppy, average-looking strikes, and then he goes immediately for the takedown. And I mean, I know that's what you want out of a wrestler, you know, relentless, go for the takedowns all the time, but he just doesn't seem comfortable in the feet. And, you know, Franca, he, he's a good fighter, and, you know, he, he ran into James Vick. James Vick is a very good fighter. Honestly, I thought Franca was doing very well before that terrible eye poke. I mean, he just got his eye jammed, man. Um, it was bad, but... um. Yeah, I, I like Franke here, man. I think um, if Franke stuffs the takedowns, I mean, I think Gillespie, he's in, I think he could be in trouble, man. I mean, another thing, this is Gillespie's first UFC fight. It's in Brazil. You never know. Um, but even if Gillespie gets Franke on the ground, I think Franke can hold his own, man. I mean, he's got he's got good scrambles. He's got good jits. Um, I, I just think Franke is the better martial artist here. And, you know, it's in his... It's in his home country. I, I just have a gut feeling that Frank is going to be able to either finish or win a lopsided decision here. I mean, I like Gillespie. I think he has a future, but I think this will just be a learning curve for him. I think he'll get better after this, but I think this is Franca's fight, man. I think he's going to win this, and my official prediction is 30-27 Franca. Next up, Vicente Luque, minus 430, taking on Hector Urbina, plus 345. I was at um, Vicente Luque's uh, fight, his rematch against Hader Hassan, and man, he just, you know, wrapped him up in that anaconda and put him to sleep in, what, like two minutes? It was crazy, but um, Luque, he's got the higher ceiling, man. He's getting a lot better, you know. Um, Black Zillions is treating him really well. He, I'm seeing a lot, 
a lot of improvement out of him. You know, he's a young guy. He lost a lot of fights earlier in his career, but I think he learned a lot from those, and I see a lot of potential in him at uh, 24 years old. He's got a higher ceiling than Urbina, but, you know, Urbina's been along, around for a long time. He's got that experience advantage. You know, he could catch Luke with something, but I think the most likely outcome here is a, um, a Luke decision and uh, first round. You know, Bartos Fabinski was able to take down Urbina relatively easy, what, like 10, 15 times and hold him down. Urbina showed good sub defense, but um, Fabinski's not the grappler that Luke is, so um, I like Luke first round sub here. Next up, Stevie Ray minus 165 taking on Alain Patrick plus 145. When this fight was first announced, um, I slightly favored uh, Patrick just by, you know, looking at the matchup. And then when the line came out, I had uh, Patrick plus 160. I was like, whoa, man, all right, <laughs> plus 160. I like that price. But, you know, after doing tape study, I think uh, I think Stevie Ray is the pick here. I think he's going to be able to... Um, you know, stuff takedowns and avoid the uh, crazy kicks of Patrick. I think he's going to be able to bring it to uh, the second round and then maybe uh, TKO him. Um, Patrick's only loss is to uh, Mirbek Tysonov, you know, who's a beast, but he hasn't beaten anybody better than Stevie Ray or even on Stevie Ray's level. Um, I think Stevie Ray's going to be able to um, take out the Brazilian here. I don't see this fight going to a uh, decision either way, so I don't think the judges and the hometown is going to come into play. I, I think Stevie Ray um, gets it done here with, you know, relative ease. Next fight, interesting fight, um, Eric Silva plus 115 taking on Luan Chagas plus, or minus 135. <sighs> uh, this is another thing. Um, I like Silva when I first read the uh, matchup, and then um, I did the tape study, and I like Chagas now. I, Eric Silva, he's been looking bad, man. I mean, he got knocked out by Nordin Taleb, and Nordin Taleb doesn't knock people out. But And I think Luan Chagas is better than Nordin, Nordin Taleb. Um, I was really impressed with Chagas in that fight against Marais. You know, um, it, he didn't win. It was a draw, but... You know, I took a lot away from that fight. You know, it was on short notice. Marais was a big favorite. Um, you know, Chagas, he knocked Marais down with that huge head kick. Uh, he showed good grappling. You know, he held his own definitely in Marais. He's a high-level BJJ guy. I mean, but, um, yeah, I like um, I like Chagas here a lot. I don't think Silva's going to be able to submit or KO him. Uh, I think his only chance to win would be a, a decision, and he hasn't won a decision since 2009, so... You know, I think Chagas could win a decision here or in um, the more likely manner finish Eric Silva early. I think uh, I think Chagas is going to be able to go in there and light Silva up. My uh, prediction is a first round knockout for Luan Chagas. But um, yeah, man, I mean, Eric Silva, he, he looked like the truth back in the day, man. He was just destroying everyone and now fell off. I mean... I'm not, I don't like to say a lot, guys, you know, the USADA coming in and, um, you know, basically stopping guys from taking PEDs, I, I don't like to make a lot of accusations, but Eric Silva, I think, one is one of those guys that clearly was, uh, <laughs> was on something for a little while there, but uh, no longer is the case, but uh, yeah, I like Chagas there. Next up, Juicy and Formiga minus 200 versus Dustin Ortiz. like this fight. One of my favorites on the card. Um, you know, uh, Ortiz is your typical Rufus sport fighter. Good striking, decent wrestling, good on the ground. Um, I, he finds himself getting into a lot of uh, close split decisions, but I think Formiga is going to be too much for him here. I think Formiga is going to win a um, lopsided decision. I think he's going to be able to 30-27 Ortiz here. I don't think Ortiz is going to have much for him. You know, Formiga, even um, at his eight. well, I don't even know. I believe he's like 31 or something like that. I could be completely wrong. But he's getting a lot better. I mean, Novo Munoz really sharpening his striking. His striking against Wilson Hayes was excellent. I mean, he dropped Wilson Hayes and... MMA math doesn't work all the time, I realize that, but Dustin Ortiz against Wilson Hayes, Wilson Hayes just, you know, beat the hell out of him, like Juicier Formiga. The Formiga-Wilson Hayes fight was close, but I thought Formiga clearly won. Um, I just like Formiga to outbox Ortiz here and possibly look for takedowns and outgrapple him. I like Formiga here, 30-27. Next up, Hani Yaya minus 140, taking a Missionary Tanaka plus 120. I like uh I like Hani Aya here. I mean, 
this is going to be a hell of a grapple fest, man. I'm really looking forward to this fight. But, um, you know, Tanaka, I think Tanaka should be undefeated. You know, he lost that one split decision. I forget the gentleman's name. Um, it was in, um, I think it was the Hunt Nelson card in Japan. I think Tanaka won that fight, but uh, he should be undefeated. But he's running into Hani Aihe here, who I don't think is the greatest matchup for him. You know, Tanaka, he's a good grappler. He, he's ex he's more explosive and faster than um, Hani Aya, but Hani Aya, man, I, he's just got the skills. He's a world-class grappler. and I think he's going to be too much for Tanaka here. I'm not going to bet on the fight just because um, I think it's going to end up being one of those close split decisions. And I mean, it's in Brazil, so you never know, but I'm just staying away from it, man. I, I, it's going to be a crazy fight. I just, I'd rather sit back and watch it, to be honest. I don't think it's worth betting at all. Maybe if, it's, no. Nah. Maybe if Tanaka was a bigger underdog, I'd take him, but I'm just going to stay away. But uh, my official prediction is uh, Hani Aya, 29-28 decision. Um, next up, Gilbert Burns, minus 185, taking on Michelle Prezeris, plus 160. This is a weird fight, man. I think, um, obviously, Gilbert Burns, you know, world-class BJJ, he's going to want to get Prezeris on the ground, but I don't think he can get his big ass onto the ground, man. And, you know, Michelle Prezeris, he's got good wrestling. He, you know, Michelle Prezeris, he's a big guy. He He's like um, the second coming of Gleason Tebow, man. I've heard a couple people say that. He, he's just this big guy that gets by by... Um, you know, pushing people against the cage and taking them down and, you know, getting by on his size. I mean, I think he's like 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, very short for um, 155, but, um, so I don't think Burns is going to be able to get on the ground here. I think it's most likely going to end up being a uh, boring striking match, but, um, I'll give Burns the striking advantage just based on, um, him training at the Black Zillions and getting better under, uh, Henry Hooft, so, um, yeah, I got Burns, uh, 30-27, in a boring decision, I don't think we're going to see much in this fight. I mean, if it, and if it gets on the ground, I think Burns should be able to submit Prezeris, but I don't think it gets there. Next up on the main card, go to Freddy Pepe, minus 150, Mike Delatore, plus 130. I like Delatore in this fight. Uh, I think he's the way better martial artist. Um, you know, Pepe, he's the more dangerous martial artist, but... I like Mike Delatore here. I like betting on the better fighter, so um, especially at plus 130. So um, I think Mike Delatore is a very smart, calculated fighter. I don't think he's going to be able to uh, get caught by any of those crazy strikes. I don't think he's going to get caught in a submission. And um, you know, Pepe has four wins on his record. He has those three straight crazy finishes against um, Deshaun Johnson, um, Andre Feely, and um, Nawab the Hot. And then he has a split decision against uh, Milton Vieira. I don't think he won that fight. He, he, he shouldn't have won that fight. And that would have been uh, four losses in a row for him. And he wouldn't even have gotten those uh, chances to get those three wins. But, yeah, man. So I don't think he could win a decision against Tor Tori. And I don't think he finishes them either. So uh, I think Mike Delatore is a very solid bet here at plus 130. My pick is Delatore's second round TKO. But he could win a decision here too. Um I really like Mike Delatore. I mean, you never know. Pepe in Brazil, he's a crazy man. He can hit him with something crazy. Mike Delatore, he got knocked out that one time against um, Maximo Blanco. But in my opinion, that was a bad stoppage, man. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it was pretty bad. Um, yeah, I like Mike Delatore here, second round TKO. Next up, Tiago Santos, minus 600 versus Eric Spitzley, plus 450. You know, I don't like to crap talk professional athletes but he especially ones that would kick my ass but eric spicely he's not ufc caliber man he's not that great of a fighter i think santos is going to be able to just go in there and knock him out in like a minute or so i mean um eric spicely when he went in there against sam alvey sam alvey's not you know sam alvey's got power but he's not this crisp technical striker and he just went in there and you know pounded him and put him in the guillotine and santos he's a very good striker, improving every day. I, I, I mean, Spicely obviously has a ground advantage, but there's no way it gets there. I think Santos just keeps range and then eventually knocks him out in like a minute, minute and a half. Um, not much to talk about here, man. I think uh, Santos just rolls. Um, I got Santos first round KO. Next up, my favorite fight on the card. Um, 
Francisco Trinaldo minus 130 versus Paul Felder plus 110. Uh, I like I like Paul Felder, but you know, he had that win against Danny Castillo. It looked amazing with that spinning back fist. And then he had that fight against Edson Barboza, where he looked even more amazing. I think that loss against Edson was his best performance. The thing is, I haven't seen much improvement since that Barboza fight, and he hasn't looked very great since then. Um, and even at Trinaldo's age, I think he's improving and looking better than ever. I think... Uh, I think uh, Trinaldo boxes Felder up here for three rounds. Um, once again, MMA math doesn't always work, but um, it works most of the time. Uh, Ross Pearson, similar opponent. Um, Ross Pearson outboxed Felder. Trinaldo outboxed Pearson. Um, I just think there's a clear boxing advantage here. I mean, Trinaldo, he's shown to sh slow down in the later rounds, but I think he's going to be up 2-0 by the time he slows down. So I like Trinaldo here via 30-27, um, maybe a 29-28 decision. Um, you know, he doesn't have to travel. Paul Felder has to travel. I mean, there's a lot to con take into consideration here. I mean, <sighs> the lines, you know, Trinaldo at minus 130, I think he's take worth taking a stab on. Um, I just think... You know, he's getting old, he could get caught, you never know when a guy's going to drop off, especially in a 155, but I think he's going to be able to outstrike Felder here for three rounds, 30-27 decision. But uh, next up, don't like this fight, uh, Roy Nelson minus one, uh, 450 versus Bigfoot Silva plus 360. Don't think Bigfoot sh Silva should be fighting in um, an MMA at all, just based off medical reasons. Um, you look at his record since uh, the, the ban of TRT, he has won one fight against Soa Pulele. I mean, and I think he might have even been losing that fight before he won. Um, he, other than that Pulele fight, he, he's got knocked out in under four minutes every single time. And he's about to face the uh, biggest power puncher that uh, he's had to face in quite a while. I mean, aside from Mark Hunt, and you know, you saw what Mark Hunt did to him. You know, Roy Nelson hasn't been looking great, but that power doesn't go away, man. And I think all he has to do is, you know, tap Silva in the face, and he's going to fall down and flop around. So, not much to say here. I don't think it gets past uh, the first round. Roy Nelson, he uh, he's not going to get finished, you know. He, we've seen Roy Nelson's chin over the years. I mean, that punch he took against uh, Derek Lewis in that third round of his last fight is crazy. I don't know how he lived after that, but... um. Yeah, Roy Nelson, he's going to have three rounds of chances to knock out Bigfoot, and he's not going to need it. He's going to need, like, a minute, two minutes to just KO the guy. Um, it's not going to be good for Bigfoot, and hopefully it's his last fight. He can just end it out in uh, Brazil. Hopefully it's his last fight no matter what. But, um, yeah, I like Roy Nelson first round KO here. And then um, Adam Burrell minus 450 versus Philippe Nover plus 360. You know... Um, Nover's an interesting guy, um, you know, he always comes in, uh, great shape, uh, he, he's got the skills, he, you can tell he works hard in the gym, but he just can't put it all together, um, he can't beat good guys, uh, he, in my opinion, since he came back to the UFC, he hasn't looked that terrible, but that one split decision win he got, I think he should have lost, he should be 0-2 in my opinion, Burrell, he hasn't been looking good either, but I think the speed and the skills is just going to be too much for Nova here. I mean, Nova, he's never really been a big knockout guy, and Burrell, I mean, that's how Burrell's going to lose here by getting knocked out. I just think Burrell, uh, I think Burrell's just going to be able to uh, outclass him for three rounds, maybe get a submission. I don't think he'd be able to knock out Nova, but... I like Burrell 30-27 here, and he's a pretty safe play. And then last up, the main event of the evening, Cyborg Santos taking on Lena Landsberg. Minus 1275 Cyborg, plus 825 Landsberg. You know, I watched a lot of Landsberg's fights. She's all right, man. She She's not that bad. She, You know, she's got good kickboxing. She's good in the clinch, but she's never faced someone like Cyborg, and you look at all the girls that face Cyborg that have never faced anyone like Cyborg. Nine out of ten times, Cyborg goes in there and just starches them in the first round. Uh, unless your name is Marlos Conan. Then, you know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, 
another fight. Not much to say here. I think Cyborg is just going to be able to overwhelm her with strikes and, you know, put her away relatively easy. I got Cyborg first round TKO here. But uh, quickly go over my uh, bets for this week. Uh, it's going to be another big one for me, man. Um, I got 10 bets. I got uh, a unit on Mike De La Torre plus 130. I got a unit Luan Chagas plus 130. I got a unit on Formiga by Decision plus 140. I got a unit on Silva Chagas under 1.5. I got um, I got a unit on Bigfoot Nelder and Bigfoot Nelson under 1.5. And then I got uh, five parlays. I got um, Nelson Cyborg and Barrow at minus 120. I have uh, two unit or 2.4 units on that. I got two units on Barrow, Santos, and Formiga at plus 150. And then I got 1.1 unit on Cyborg Trinaldo just to uh, beef up that Trinaldo line. And then I got 1.1 on Cyborg Franca just to beef up the Franca line. And then the last one I just recently made right before I started recording this. I got um, Tiago Santos, Kago, Stevie Ray, and Vicente Luque at plus 179. But uh, yeah, man. That's all I got for now. Um, looking forward to this card. There's a lot of weird matchups. There's a lot of uh, squash matches. There's some really good matchups like Trinaldo Felder and Ortiz Formiga. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good night. But um, yeah, that's all, I'm at. that's all I got. I'm out. Enjoy the fights.